All right. Well, good morning and thanks for joining me for another Sprinkler talk this morning. Um, we're going to be looking at rules of obstructions today. Uh, this is going to be split into two parts. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you like what you see in part one, then we're going to have more in part two next week. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, everyone can see my screen. Everybody, everyone can hear me. Uh, if there are any other any kind of technical issues, then do drop me a, a note in the chat, and uh, I can see what I can do about that. Uh, got a slightly different, um, slightly different setup today, so I'm in the, in a, a sort of different room than I normally am. So using different ports and and things like that. So yeah, hopefully everything works fine. Uh, so, yeah, just a, again, a little reminder. Uh, my name's Andy and I work at Project Fire. Uh, we're based in Staffordshire and uh, we sell uh, innovative products into the automatic fire sprinkler industry. So, uh, yeah, as I said, today is uh, looking at obstruction. So it's more of a kind of a sprinkler design um, presentation today. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, I think, you know, we need to look at what is an obstruction? What am I talking about here? So I've come up with my own sort of definition. Um, so an obstruction is basically anything which isn't uh, a ceiling or a wall, uh, which is getting in the way of um, sprinkler head placement. Um, so I would say the component of the building, a component of the completed building, such as a structural component, could be a mechanical component, an electrical component, a service, equipment, or aesthetic uh, component, say, other than your standard walls and ceilings, which affect the layout of sprinkler heads away from the preferred placement. You know, that, that's what I'm saying is an obstruction. Uh, and obviously, it is uh, very, very common uh, for us to, to find obstructions when we're doing uh, sprinkler uh, layout designs. Um, this example here is showing the perfect room. Um, you know, if uh, this is kind of an example, obviously there are lots of, uh, of other examples uh, of uh, particular sized rooms which would be perfect. And I say perfect because we can lay out the sprinkler heads to their maximum uh, design spacing. Um, so this is an office, uh, so it's going to be uh, what's well, likely to be ordinary hazard. Um, so ordinary hazard means 12 square metre uh, spacing maximum. So we see in this example, we can go four metres uh, in one direction, going half um, spacing to the walls, and three metres in the other direction, and one and a half metres to walls, which means that in this, this room, which is eight metres by six metres, we can have four heads in there, and so that is the the maximum minimum, if that makes sense. So yeah, four heads is the, the, the fewest number of heads that you could possibly need, and say so they are all maxed out. So as a sprinkler designer, um, you would be very happy uh, to get that working well. But of course, that doesn't really happen very much in reality, because we have obstructions to deal with. Um, so one example of an obstruction uh, could be a ceiling grid. So here I've, I've put a, a ceiling grid uh, on top um, of, of that kind of head placement. So you can see two of my heads uh, are slightly off center now um, because the, the ceiling grids are typically 600 by 600 squares. Obviously you can get different ones, but the, the typical ones that we have are 600 by 600. And the other two sprinkler heads are on the join of two um, ceiling tiles. Uh, now, of course, can do that. You can have them. You don't have to be in the center of the tile, but generally speaking, that is what people want. That's what people prefer to have the sprinkler heads in the center of a tile. So, so because these heads are at the absolute maximum, even if we move them just 10 millimeters to one side or the other, that is going to mean that we're going to have to introduce more sprinkler heads. So now, we could go for a design that looks a bit more like this. So now we've got six heads rather than four, and we're changing the spacing. We're still trying to keep it as even as we can. Um, so I've still got my, my three uh, metre um, going sort of north to south, uh, but then east to west, I've changed it to, to 2.4, and I'm going for 1.5. So I'm going as, as sort of near as I can to half spacing uh, within the, the confines of um, 
putting the seat, the sprinkler in the center of a tile. So, they, so that's uh, that's a kind of a, a very simple example of, of an obstruction. We're dealing with it by adding additional sprinkler heads, obviously within um, the, the the same rules. So no closer than two meters, no further apart than four. Half spacing to walls, so you know, where we can make things um, work out nicely mathematically, then we can do that. Otherwise, we're just looking for a kind of a sensible distance uh, to the walls, which is less uh, than uh, the, the half spacing. Um, but then we might have the even more obstructions. So you might find that, um, you know, that the lighting uh, design says actually you know, we want those, those tiles, those, all those exact tiles that you've just used for your sprinklers, we're going to use them as lights instead. Uh, and obviously, the, you know, there can be um, some kind of, um, I was going to say argument then, but, you know, a, a professional discussion um, about, well, can't you move your lights? Um, can't you, aren't you have them in a slightly different place? Um, but, yeah, let, let, let's just say that in this instance, um, the sprinkler guys have got to move uh, sprinkler heads in order to accommodate uh, the lights in these particular places. So, again, we can do that. Uh, we just need to change the layout. So there's a suggested way of just moving them a little bit to the left and right. Um, so again, it's not it's not ideal um, to have to kind of switching between um, between um, distances between heads. So I've got now 0.9, 2.4, 3.6, 0.9. So again, that, that's not ideal to keep mixing that up. But it still works. It's still within say the, the, the kind of general confines that we have in terms of not closer than two and no further away than four meters. And I'll say, I've still got six heads in this example. Um, what about a more industrial example? So a, a common obstruction that we, we have to kind of come across are beams. So you know, we don't have a flat ceiling. Um, we might have a sloped ceiling, although that, that doesn't tend to, to cause us too much um, issues because basically you're, you're designing it as if it was flat um, and then adjusting the, um, the, the length of the pipe to compensate for, for the slope. So slopes don't, don't tend to uh, cause us any too many trouble. Um, but beams and, and supports, they could be exposed um, structural beams. They might be enclosed with, with plasterboard. They might be concrete um, beams. But yeah, where the ceiling isn't flat, um, say, can cause an obstruction. That's obviously quite a common thing to, to come across. So the placement of the, of the heads relative to the beam will very much depend on the size of the beam, the type of, the, the type of sprinkler head used, and uh, the overall ceiling construction, i.e. whether it is um, combustible or not combustible. Uh, there are some sort of technical terms as to kind of um, what counts as combustible and non-combustible, but generally speaking, uh, if it's a concrete ceiling, it would be non-combustible, and if it's a wooden ceiling, it would be combustible. But like I said, there are a lot more technicalities to it uh, than that. So if, if the beam is, is quite small, then we essentially can just ignore it. Um, you know, we, we want, if, if the pipe can kind of come underneath it, if the heads can be placed um, where there isn't going to be an effect in the, of the discharge pattern, then essentially we can ignore it. But when the beams get bigger, then we need to do something about it to ensure um, the discharge of the sprinklers is still going to be uh, compliant. So let's just have a quick, little quick look at uh, the placement of sprinkler heads in respect to ceilings. So sprinkler heads need to be close to the ceiling because of the way in which they work. Um, so the heat from the fire is going to rise up to ceiling level. When it gets to ceiling level, it's going to sort of collect on the ceiling. It'll spread out um, throughout that ceiling and it'll create like a heat layer um, at the very top of the ceiling. Uh, as the fire then grows, that heat, that heat layer will expand and it will start to come further down uh, from the very top of the ceiling then into the room. So um, in, uh, in the extreme case, you know, if we, we were to put our sprinkler heads on the floor, 
uh, that's going to take a very long time for that heat from the, that kind of collects on the ceiling to get all the way down to the floor. And by that point, um, you're going to have yourself a major fire and you know, the sprinklers are unlikely to be able to do anything. Um, so you know, basically, as close to the ceiling as we can is good. Um, we don't want them very high uh, to the ceiling. We want them very, very close to the ceiling. Um, so that the best um, distance is between 75 and 150 millimeters below the ceiling. And uh, you know, I, I guess that, that those figures have been um, worked out through lots and lots of fire tests over the years have demonstrated that, that is the, um, the sort of the magic numbers um, as far as um, effectiveness and, and reaction time of the sprinklers between 75 and 150 millimeters. So, so that's what we're looking for. So where these beams uh, mean that it is then impossible or difficult to, to place them um, at 75 to 150, then that is where we, we have to start using some different methodologies to work out um, how to place them effectively. Uh, there are some other rules. Um, so, for example, you can go up to 300 millimeters for combustible ceilings and 450 millimeters for non-combustible ceilings. Okay, so some, between 75 and 150 is the ideal range, but to say that can be extended, um, but there is a, a clause here, uh, the area involved shall be as small as possible. Okay, so we, we shouldn't be doing this uh, just because, uh, we ought to be doing this um, because there is a good reason for it. You know, there, there's a, a structural difference or something that we're trying to achieve um, where we have to extend those distances down, um, but it shouldn't just be done um, you know, because it's just, just easier or quicker to do that. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about beams. Um, so where, say, that, that situation happens, say, where the beam is, is large, which means that, you know, we're going to struggle to, to get them placed um, as close to the ceiling as we would like, um, we then have to use one of these three options. So this can be found in 12.4.6 of uh, 12.845. It says, when a sprinkler head is placed above the level of the underside of a beam, or similar instruction, i.e., because the beam is, is so large that we have to um, put the head sort of above uh, that, um, that level, then we've got some options. Um, and those options are as follows. So A, we can apply the beam rule, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next few slides. You can apply um, a beam and bay spacing. The beam and bay spacing um, I think I'll explain after I've given you option C. Option C is sprinklers placed either side as though it were a wall. Okay, so sprinklers are allowed to be placed closer than two meters where there is something like a beam in the way um, because then you know, the, the water isn't going to, um, the sprinklers aren't going to wet each other. And, and, and that's, that's the point. That's the reason why we don't want the, the sprinklers to be closer than two meters is because then they have a chance of, of getting, of getting their, their kind of neighbor wet, which is going to cool it down, which means it, it isn't going to operate like it would do if it was further away than two meters. Hope that makes sense. So as the fire grows, as the fire gets, gets hotter, we need more heads to operate in order to be effective. Um, if you've got a single head operating and its neighbor would be operating, apart from the fact it's getting um, covered with, with cold water, um, that's obviously going to affect it um, activating at the right temperature. So, so, so that, that, that's why we have this no closer than two meters rule. But say if there is a, a beam, then we can, we can place them closer than two meters on the basis that they're not going to get each other wet. So you can imagine that the beam is a wall and then you can place a sprinkler head like that. So you end up with a whole load of, of kind of small, um, sort of long skinny rooms um, where you, you used to have kind of one big room. Um, as you could imagine, you know, this is going to cause a lot more sprinkler heads to be required, a lot more sprinkler heads to be placed. So the beam and bay rule is um, a way of kind of uh, skipping some of these. So you wouldn't have to put sprinklers in every single uh, bay. 
um, you know, the fairy is kind of the, the word that we use to, for the, the, the area which is created in between uh, the beams. So, so it's a way of kind of recognizing that if you applied C to a large scale, then you would end up with loads and loads of sprinkler heads. So the beam and bay rule just kind of spaces that out and makes that more sensible. The beam rule then. Okay, so the, the beam rule is, is all about, um, say this, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the exact placement of the sprinkler head in relation to a, a beam so that the discharge is, is unaffected. Okay, so the, the discharge pattern um, looks a bit like this. Um, obviously, this is a kind of a, a, a graphic uh, example of, of what it looks like, but we do get this kind of umbrella shape, this, this water kind of spreading out, and the further the water goes out, um, the more it, it kind of pulls it down. Obviously, gravity, um, the water is sprayed out from the side, and the, you know, the, the further it's got to travel, the longer gravity has got to affect, um, affect on it, and that's why it kind of dips down at the sides. So yeah, we want to place our sprinkler head. If we want to place it high, then we need it to be um, a little bit further away. Um, if it's going to be low, it can go a bit closer. Simple as that. So what we have here is th this kind of graph here. Uh, and the graph, again, can be found in, in 12.4.6. Um, so this is, kind of, again, kind of a, um, you know, my version of, of the beam graph. Uh, but so it is there in the standard for you to have a look at. And it'll show you lots of different styles of sprinkler heads. I think there's about six um, different ones in total. And it'll show you, okay, if you want to go this far away, they need to go at this height. If you want to go this height, they need to go this far. So you can use it either way. You can either give it the X value, and it'll tell you the Y value, or the Z value, so I'll say. Um, and if you if you want to if you know the z value, it can tell you the x value. So like I say, it, it works either way around, and it works for a whole variety of sprinkler heads. And again, this is you know, a good example of you know lots of data, lots of tests um, over lots and lots of, of time. You know, we we've kind of um, got this this data to to tell us that this is what works. Um, so we don't need to. Um, we don't need sort of to, to kind of worry about it. We don't need to do sort of computer models to, to show things. We can just apply uh, this rule from this simple graph, um, and we can we can take a measurement that we know is going to work. Uh, just a, a note on that um, that graph in 12.4.6. Yeah, there is um, a, a printing error uh, on that that graph. Which means that the um, which one of the curves is missing, and that's for conventional pendant sprinklers, um, which is, is probably quite an important one. Um, so yeah, that that, that has been replaced by TB229 Figure 10. Um, we say is, is replacing Figure 10 from Recording is on. It's exactly the same, um, but it's got that extra line put back on it. We say when it kind of it, it was missed off the original graph. Okay, and that is it for this week. Um, so a bit, bit, bit of a shorter one uh, this time. Uh, so yeah, on part two, we're going to be looking at other in, other obstructions. Uh, part two is next week. We're going to be looking at um, ducts, uh, cable trays, um, things that are going to get in the way, walkways like, um, and it is a question of whether we put the sprinkler heads above it or below it. And uh, so we can apply uh, some simple rules to figure that out. So, yeah, if, uh, if you found that useful, uh, then join me again for part two next week. We're going to be going over some, some different rules on obstructions. Uh, as always, I'll just be hanging on a, little, uh, a few minutes to see if there's any questions in the chat, uh, and uh, I'll see if I can answer them. Okay, but, yeah, I hope you have a, a good week, and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.